All right, the purpose of this lab is to look at atomic spectroscopy. And in this video, we will be exploring this lab and kind of covering some of the preliminary concepts as well as talking about how to do the pre-lab questions themselves. So what is this lab exactly? Well, this lab is more or less a real life version of a lot of the stuff that we saw at the beginning of chapter three. So we are gonna be looking at atomic spectroscopy and atomic structure. And what we're really gonna be getting after here are some of those early chapter three concepts. So in particular, looking at atomic spectra. So if you remember from lecture, we talked about those dark spectral lines, those bright spectral lines, and now you're actually gonna to get to see them in action. And so we are going to look at a series of elements that we have excited with electrons. They're going to emit electron, uh, they're going to be emitting light as their electrons go back and forth, up and down along those energy levels. And they'll be giving us some, some data to kind of work off of. So before we move on too much into this, let's take a look at what one of these things actually looks like from that particular standpoint. So here we are on YouTube and we're gonna look at this particular video. We're only gonna look at the first minute of this video or so um, and look at what's happening here. So this is a simple demonstration of a hydrogen spectrum experiment. I've just got four gas discharge tubes set up and I'll put 20,000 volts across each one in turn. Now you'll see the first one is hydrogen, it has that um, bluey purple glow. The next one is helium. The third one is neon. And the last one is nitrogen. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the original hydrogen tube and hold a diffraction grating up in front of it. So we'll split it into a spectrum. I've got a rule behind so you can see the spectral lines. Now I'm bringing it up, I'm using the 100 lines per millimeter uh, grating. And you'll see there's the first order uh, bright lines and you can see the various lines in there. All right, so I'm going to stop it there because it, it goes further from here, but we really don't need more, more than this for that matter. Um, but you can kind of see what we're going after here. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have those gas tubes. We're going to hit them with energy. And we're going to look at through, instead of a diffraction grading, we're going to use a spectroscope. And the spectroscope has the advantage of having the little ruler that he used on the inside. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna calibrate that. So take a spectrum where, take a, a gas discharge tube where we know its values very, very, very well. And we know where its wavelengths are supposed to be. And we're gonna measure that on the spectroscope to get an idea of corrections that we'll then use for the rest of the experiment. So, in total, we're going to look at wavelengths and frequencies of the light emitted by each of these elements and associate those with energies. And we're going to do that using the gas discharge tubes. So the general procedure is outlined here. We are going to be, we are going to be lighting these element tubes up one at a time and we're gonna measure through our spectroscope and figure out where the lines are for each of these. And using Excel, we are going to calibrate those lines and come up with some averages and use those averages to, to help us with other gases. And so this is gonna be a chance for us to really use our our Excel skills and see how long, how much they've come along in the past five weeks, because we're going to do a calibration curve. 
we're going to use that calibration curve to uh, adjust our corrections so that when we do these other gases here, we can look at them very, very specifically and say, okay, a measurement of 4.4 on my little spectroscope is a wavelength of 445 nanometers or whatever the case may be. So the lab kind of walks you through how you're gonna do that, how you're gonna make your calibration curve, how we're gonna use Excel to do all of our calculations for us for frequency and energy so that we don't have to calculate them and compute them by hand. So again, if your Excel skills are still somewhat lacking, this is a good way to kind of bump those up and, and use them a little bit more concisely, a little more clearly. So let's get into the pre-lab questions here. So first question here, draw and label an initial macroscopic model of what you expect to see when the current is turned on to the hydrogen discharge tube. Now, if you're paying attention during that video, you kind of already know the answer to this question. You just need to label it properly. What is that lamp going to look like when we turn on the juice? What is that lamp going to look like when we take that power supply and plug it in and turn it on? That's all that we're asking in 1A here. And then the second question, 1B, what do you expect to see in the spectroscope? Well, think about what was seen in that diffra diffraction grating. What's it gonna look like? Are you gonna see one color from the hydrogen? Are you going to see many colors? Are you gonna see all of the colors? So again, what do you expect to see in that spectroscope once we um, break apart the light that's being emitted from the hydrogen into its pieces and parts? And then the last question here is about the microscopic model. Now, you've had the benefit of already seeing this in chapter three. So think about it, think really good, think really hard here. What's going on inside of that atom that is causing what you expect to see in 1B? Leave an explanation. Why is it doing what it is doing? Why? Are we seeing in the spectroscope what you are expecting to see there? Now, this is going to be graded on a completion base basis because these are all predictions. These are all kind of models. You should have a pretty good idea of what the correct answers are, but I'm not going to ding you for having incorrect answers um, so long as the answers kind of make some sense. So this is due in grade scope by Monday night. Um, and that it is the only assignment that is due in grade scope on Monday night, other than that skill builder that you had to do from last week's uh, virtual lab. So if you have any questions about this pre-lab or about the activity that you're going to be doing, um, please let me know, send me a message on Remind or through your email. Otherwise, I will see you in lab. Have a good day.